Hello, everybody. Um, hope I'm live and uh, you're here watching this live stream today. If you're here, uh, do say hello and let me know you're here listening and where you're from and what, any questions that you have about uh, identifying the best business idea for you. This is a great topic because I love talking about this topic um, because a lot of you that are here are probably in uh, that uh, stage of really understanding and being able to identify uh, what should you be doing if you were to quit your job, right? What, you, what should you be doing to make a living that is not what your resume uh, currently has in it? And, and also, how can you be cubicle chair, right? That's what we're he all here for. That's why you're here at Screw the Cubicle. Um, so, I would sort of love for this to be collaborative. Like when you guys have questions, this sort of makes the live stream better uh, because then I can answer your questions for you. Uh, and if you're watching the replay, I always check the comments. Uh, so make sure that you submit your urgent questions here and I'll be uh, happy to coach you on it and help you out if you have that. So please do say hello if you're here live, uh, but also introduce yourself if you're watching uh, the replay. Okay, so um, this, this live stream today is all about um, what to do really when uh, you are in the midst of identifying the bus a business idea for you, or maybe you thought you have a business idea, but it still feels a little bit hazy. Uh, and what should you really be doing when you have too many ideas or too many passions? Because that's usually the problem. It's not that you don't have any ideas. Sometimes you have too many ideas, you know, or sometimes you don't have any at all. It's usually one ex extreme to the other, right? So whatever, um, pain point you're in right now, uh, that's what we're going to be really covering uh, in this live stream. Okay. So again, if you're here, please say hello so that I know someone's here because I never really see what people write on the chat box till after. So hopefully I'll get to see your questions, but uh, just say hello so I know that I'm not talking to myself, which is great. Uh, and if you're here for the first time on my uh, Facebook page here, um, hopefully you know who I am, but a quick little introduction is uh, I'm Lydia Lee. I'm the founder of Screw the Cubicle. Uh, primarily, I'm a corporate escape coach that really helps people identify uh, what business they should be starting, uh, what is meaningful work for them, and how do they uh, start and bootstrap a business, a side hustle uh, while they're in a full-time job and make sure that the time they're spending on those efforts are focused and effective uh, and they're accountable to it, right? That's my job is sometimes to make people do the things they're scared to do, uh, but do it in a way that feels really good. Hi, Carolyn, always the first one on, which is great. Uh, thanks for joining me today. So um, there's a little bit of drilling happening outside my house, so I hope that that doesn't interrupt the call, but they um, have stopped. So let's uh, hope for the best for this live stream. All right, so the first thing I wanted to, to say is that if you guys want more in-depth training on this, you'll see from, uh, I don't know if it's up or down from this video, uh, but you'll see a link for a free webinar that I'm running next week uh, that basically helps you to um, do more about what we're going to be talking about today, right? So we only have a few, like 20 minutes or so for a live stream. I want to give you more training around what we're going to talk about today. So you can sign up for free using the link uh, above or below me, wherever it is, uh, and, and we can actually talk more about this and we'll give you uh, a workbook to work on and we'll also give you uh, a chance to ask me questions questions as you work on your business idea. Uh, so I would love for you to join me on my in-depth webinar next week, talking all about what business you should be starting and what are the steps you should be um, implementing today to get the validation that you need, that your business idea is needed, uh, and also a business idea that you want to do, right? There are so many business ideas out there and you always, you know, I think what happens when you're initially starting this journey of like thinking about being an entrepreneur or thinking about working for yourself or wanting to freelance, you're probably going out there in the Google world sort of like researching everything, trying to find out all the information that you need to get. And sometimes that's a great thing for inspiration, but sometimes it could also be really um, extra confusing because there's so much out there. There's so many types of businesses. There's so many people doing so many things uh, and making a living in different areas. Um, and where I really want you to focus on is not about what everybody else is doing and not having this business pornography behavior of just like researching, learning, over learning, but actually really getting uh, more present about yourself, what you are able to do, what are your capabilities, what are skills that already exist for you. It's so much easier and more meaningful to do something that you already know how to do and repurpose these skill sets and expertise uh, into a new business or a new focus for a business versus trying to conform yourself to something else someone else is doing just because it seems really successful for them. Um, Business ideas change all the time. There's always a great business idea out there for someone to grab, but what doesn't change is who you are, 
right? What life experience you've already come with, what work experiences you already come with, that doesn't really change as much. So it's better to use the tools that you have and the skill sets that you have and being more strategic about that and, and building a business faster that way rather than trying to uh, be the next Instagram superstar or be the next, you know, whatever influencer you see out there when it actually doesn't match your strengths and your skills, right? That's the first thing I sort of want to say about um, this inventory check of your skills, right? So if you're watching this right now or the replay, I would love for you to comment below this video on like, how clear do you think you are about what you're good at? How confident are you with what you're good at? And what do you think is missing between uh, feeling good about a skill set or maybe you don't know what that skill set is, but what do you think you need to get clear on in order to be more confident in knowing what you have to offer? Okay, so let me know below and I'll check in on that chat box uh, a little bit later. All right, so the first step of really picking the right business idea is not to look at any other business ideas, right? We want to start holistic and we want to start organically with what you have actually already available to you, which is the life experience, the work experience you already have. So the first step is really to identify those strongest skills. And when I work with uh, coaching clients on this, I, I, we do like a big brainstorm session. And I think you can do this on your own, uh, in, in your own home, where you take out a bunch of sticky notes, you know, and you just start writing and brainstorming. None of it's right or wrong of things that you know how to do right? Go back into your past resume, go back into your current position that you have in your job, for example, or any extracurricular things that you've never been paid to do, but you do know how to do it and start listing your knowledge. Just start listing your know-how and doing a little bit of a brain dump, okay? Of just everything that you know how to do, just to give yourself that sort of fresh perspective about this inventory of your professional and personal skills. Then the second step really is to start really looking at all those things that you know how to do and get honest with yourself, right? Which are these skill sets that you're like, yeah, I can see myself doing that again, or I have fun doing that, or I really like it when I can help someone with this. Like, what are these skill sets that you would like to carry forward and really keep in your, uh, you know, bag of tools or your tool belt uh, and, and, and be honest about what skills that you'll ra rather leave behind? You know, so there's some things that I know how to do. Like I, I, I used to be a project manager, so I used to do a lot of things on spreadsheets. Uh, I used to have to do accounting. Um, but I don't, if I was to be honest, it's like, I don't really want to do that anymore. I had to do it for my work, but I don't want to do it anymore. So get honest with yourself and only move over really to the second column or the second step of your skills by being honest about which skills you would like to bring forward, right? That's the, sort of the first um, uh, uh, zone of what we're going to be focusing on. Then I want you to look at these skill sets and I want you to think about how you might define them. Uh, it's, it's basically, there is a difference between like, you know, um, skills that are more general. So like you might say, I'm a project manager, but that doesn't actually mean anything. It's not a skill. It's actually a job title or a job role. You want to break that role down. So as a project manager, for example, what do you do in that role? You know, you might be, um, uh, building teams. You might be, uh, building, uh, you know, task boards that other contractors will know what to do, uh, when it's been chunked down for them. You might be a great people connector where you actually find these contractors for projects and make sure that everyone is working towards the same deadline. Like what are the skills that you actually have to have to perform in that job? And I think a lot of us miss this step. We sort of just go, oh, I'm a wedding planner. I'm a project manager. I'm a writer. But there's actually a lot of um, in-depth skills that you, you utilize to create that role for yourself, to be good at that role. So you want to break it down, right? So an example of this is let's say, okay, let's use the example of a wedding planner. Right. So instead of saying that's my skill, you want to break that down even more and basically think about it like, what do I have to do to be a wedding planner? Well, that may be a combination of like, I'm good at organizing events. I'm good at understanding somebody's story to craft a theme for a wedding. Uh, I'm great at managing people because, you know, all those contractors, wedding stuff, all the moving parts of a wedding. Someone's got to be pretty detailed, right, about managing people in order to do that role. Uh, maybe you have an attention, attention to aesthetic detail, right? You, you have a great eye for decor, a great eye for colors, a great eye for design that also allows you to be a great wedding planner. Uh, you might be someone that uh, is good at creating like a great ambience or a mood or being able to plan a memorable experience from beginning to end. So as you can see, when you break it down, you can see more of your skill sets actually shining out from that job role and be a lot clearer in how you perform a job in order to actually know what your skill sets are, because these skill sets are what you can repurpose. You don't have to stay in wedding planning, but knowing that you're a good 
uh, event planner, knowing that you're good at managing people, knowing that you're good with design, for example, you can then utilize the skill and go, well, where else can I use the skill? You know, and that could be actually much more effective of uh, knowledge for you about yourself uh, than just saying this is my job role. OK, so hopefully that's clear for you. And we'll talk a bit more about this on the webinar and how to do this. But um, let me know if you have any questions about breaking down your skill sets, OK, to really pay attention to what you actually know how to do rather than it being uh, just a job role title. OK. The next thing you want to think about is uh, what has already happened for you. Like, want to start? You want to start thinking about what people have already come to you for. What are you most valued at in the jobs that you've had? What do people know you for right now in your day to day life? You know, uh, and what you know how to do may not always be what you've been paid to do professionally. I can't tell you how many times when I've worked with a coaching client where they're like, I don't have any other skill sets than just my resume, but I don't want to do those things anymore. And then they realize that actually a lot of hobby projects that they know how to do or just like life stuff that they know how to do. Like if you can be, if you know how to be a good mom or you just cook for fun, you know, whatever those things are that you've never been paid to do, but are good at, those are still skills. Just because you've never been paid to do it doesn't mean they don't exist. Doesn't mean they're not valuable. You know, so don't forget about personal stuff as well that you know how to do that is not on your resume, but you have fun doing it. Other people don't know how to do it. And you can envision yourself actually making a living from it if you tried. Right. So don't disregard personal skills uh, that can be really, really ve relevant in identifying a, a good business idea for you. So a good example of this was the second business I ever started, which is this business, Screw the Cubicle. It started as a blog. It started as just like, well, I had to get myself out of a, a job. I had to learn how to side hustle. I had to learn how to freelance. I had to learn how to negotiate my contract with my boss to sort of have a great landing pad financially before I quit. And I did all that sort of like because I was trying to get myself out of my job, right? And then later on, when I started blogging about it, I didn't realize that this was actually helpful for other people, you know, but because I just did it on my own, I never was paid to do it. But then there's obviously a market for it. So if I'm a market and I'm someone that needed to do that, there's probably other people like me that want to learn those steps. And so it really, I didn't know about coaching or know that this was even a possibility to make money until someone actually inquired about my services and going, well, do you help people do the things that you blog about? And I was like, right. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Um, I could think about that. Right. So don't disregard the things that you've gone through problems you've solved for yourself, <coughs> things that have been hard for you in the past and not are not anymore in your personal life that can actually be a great business idea. Okay. Knowing what problems you can solve is a great way of asking that question of what business I should build. You know, what business I should build is too, a bit too vague, a bit, a bit too big of a question. But you can ask the question of what problems do I know how to solve? What do people already come to me for? What am I on the speed dial for? What do my friends and family and colleagues rely on me for that can give me a clue as to what I'm good at, but maybe haven't realized it because it was such a natural ability. OK, so take that inventory of skills by deciding what you want to do versus what you can do. And there is a difference, right? What you can do is what you know how to do. You've been trained to do, but may not be what you want to do anymore. And you want to get really honest with that and isolate that list, chunk down that list even further to a really, really handful of stuff that you really want to do and know how to do. OK, um, the next thing that I would think about is things that you are drawn to, right? So when we think about meaningful businesses and a lot of you guys that are here, I think agree with me in that you may want to work to make a living and obviously pay the bills and make money, but there's something more to that that you need, right? Maybe you're seeking more fulfillment. Maybe you're seeking to be more of impact to people. Uh, maybe you want to be more proud of your work that you didn't have the opportunity to be proud of when you were working for somebody else. And now you get to decide the purpose behind your work. Um, and that purpose really is such a strong factor in uh, uh, helping you actually continue persevering towards launching a business versus getting demotivated because it doesn't actually mean anything to you more th th than just money and money can only take you so far, right? So people, I've seen so many people that make tons of money in their businesses, uh, you know, do everything right in how they launch a business, but it doesn't bring them personal fulfillment. And some of us are built like me in a way that I have to not only see profit, but also see like, wow, there's a reason why I should exist and why people should care. And that for some reason makes me get up at night. 
And if you guys feel that way, let me know that as well in the comments, because I always love to learn like what motivates you uh, to want to build a business, because I feel like it can't just be more uh, than just a money factor. You know, like we are humans that need more than that. And I, I and I hope that there's a tribe of people that believe in what I believe in, that that the, the expression of your business and why you start a business can be more than just yourself. Right. Can be more than just a profit game uh, and more about a giving game so that you can actually make more money when you are are actually giving um, really, really great value to people and seeing the ripple effect of your work that a lot of us really need uh, in understanding the significance of why we should pursue something. Right. And this purpose and this why can be simple, but it should be significant to you. Right. It doesn't have to be like a Mother Teresa mission, like you want to save uh, world hunger, you know, or like way too big of a cause that you can contribute to. But it can be just a small piece of the pie. Like for me, you know, I want to obviously create more uh, freedom of choice for people, but I can't solve all the corporate problems. I can't solve, you know, the way that society operates right now. Like it's so big of a problem for me to solve. But what I can help with and push the needle a little bit on is just helping people be more um, mindful about how they make a living so that they can make better choices in their life. And then hence all the ripple effect of what happens past that problem can be uh, a contribution to the bigger mission, right? In where I see the world going or what I would love to see the world going into. Um, so you're sort of almost contributing, contributing a piece of the pie to a bigger cause, right? So your why can be simple and it should be significant to you. So here are some ways to sort of get clues to know what your why is, what your purpose may be. And it already is happening around you. It's just about taking notice about what is that so that when you think about a business idea, it could be related to your interests. It could be related to causes. It could be related to a bigger message you want to be a part of. So think about things like what topics regularly draw your attention? Like, what do you want to talk about? What do you find yourself talking about the most? Uh, what are you reading about? What are you signing up for? What are you, uh, you know, who are the bloggers or influencers or publications that you follow where the topics seem to hit a nerve with you, right? What results do you love seeing or hearing about? Like when you see someone celebrate something or you see someone talking about this problem, you feel drawn to co contribute to that conversation. What are those things? right? What results or outcomes do you love to see happen in the world? You know, like when you define an ideal world for you, a world that you want to live in, what do you want to see happen in that world? You know, and how can you be a part of that world? What are some things that you can solve in leading people into having that sort of world happen for them as well? Really, it's a bigger goal, right? That you want to contribute or you feel passionate about to participate in. What are those things? And some of that can f sort of sound a bit intangible. You know, like I have writers, for example, that come to me and they're like, yeah, I want to help people publish a book. But what I'm really passionate about is that I want more stories to be told. I want more people to know that they have a story within them and that, that their legacy story can be shared with the world and that their story can really help somebody out. That's what's behind the root of the passion. The writing a book and teaching you how to write a book, teaching you how to publish a book, that's the how. But the why behind it is that, well, I wish that there's more people sharing their stories and sharing, um, you know, some of their background of uh, their their pain in the world so that they can actually uh, connect with more people in the world. That's a much bigger why than just I'm going to teach you how to publish a book. And when you sort of ask yourself these questions about what you're drawn to, what conversations you want to have, what causes you want to contribute to, there could be a theme that can come out from these answers. Right. And you might start to see a significance theme that is coming up from all these different things that you're attracted to, to be able to give you a direction of where you're going to utilize your skill sets towards that theme problem or purpose of where your work should be leading you to and leading your customers to. OK, if there's any questions about that, put them underneath this video and I'll be sure to answer them. Now, the last thing to do is that if you have a couple of different directions, you're like, well, I think I'm drawn to women leadership or I'm drawn to, you know, people telling stories, but I'm also drawn to like people publicly speaking. And I'm not really sure where I want to go right now. That's fine. And that's a much more sort of focused, small list of ideas rather than a bunch of general ideas of a list of problems. The last uh, step that you should be looking at uh, in terms of, you know, validating a business idea is first you need to validate your ideas, right? Validate um, this, the, the need for people that want this thing that you're considering, 
uh, doing for people as a value exchange for money. So you want to start with your low-hanging fruit of people, your network of people, your family, your friends, your colleagues, your Facebook followers, whatever they are. Start asking people you know and that you trust that are not going to sort of like give you a, a, a somewhat vague, you know, answer, but really will tell you like, oh, that's a great idea. Well, why is it a great idea? You know, they're willing to be honest about it uh, and, and ask them about your proposed business idea and start to note people's reactions. And keep in mind that sometimes certain people that are close to you will be biased in that response. So you want to ask as many strangers as possible, right? So if you're part of like a group, like the unconventionalists, like my group, that's the place to ask people, you know, what do you think of this idea? Do you have a problem with this idea? Um, are you someone suffering with this problem? What would you actually receive or want to receive as solutions when it comes to this problem? How urgent are you in solving this problem? You want to validate based on urgent needs, how active people, uh, how people are actively seeking these solutions and where do they gauge that um, investment, you know, of wanting to get to their success? How urgent is it? Do they need it today? Do they need it tomorrow? Is it sort of like a, oh, it's nice to have, but I don't really need it. You know, gauge that validation by asking questions to real people instead of doing more research on it. Just do the art of asking. And I can't stress enough how valuable real conversations will be when it comes to validating your business ideas. And really start looking for pain points in these conversations. Look for how people describe these problems that they're having. They may not be what you're thinking about. You know, they may not be what um, you perceive as the problem because maybe you've solved it, you know, and you're a little bit ahead of the curve. But these guys who are willing to buy from you and could be willing to invest in a solution you come up with, what are they saying? and perceive as your day-to-day -day issue. Really find the words, the languaging, and get that feedback um, of what they're, 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 they're believing is the problem and what do they also believe is the solution. That can give you so much insightful validation about what people are looking for and what you should create and how you should create it. The power of asking for feedback before you start anything new, okay? And for you personally, as you start to validate your top three list of ideas or top five list of ideas, you want to be really systematic when it comes to ranking these business ideas. Like all the ideas can be done. <coughs> all the ideas can be profitable, but which ideas are meant for you? What ideas are easier for you to start? And what ideas are also going to be a long-term sustainable idea that you can see yourself doing it for longer than the first year? Right. So think about when you rank it, you know, from one to five or how, how important this idea is to you or how valuable this idea is to you. You want to give a gut feeling sort of ranking, you know, from one to five of like how um, close I am to this idea. So think about is this idea, you know, when you rank your ideas, is this idea exciting for me to work on? Does it spark interest in me? Does it spark excitement and enthusiasm for me? Just check in with yourself if that seems like something interesting that you can see yourself immersing in and spending time doing. The second thing to rank your business idea is to think about, uh, is pursuing this idea likely to benefit me even if I was to fail? So for example, am I curious enough? you know, about this problem or these uh, business ideas to actually do the work, you know, to learn about it, to research about it, to read more about it, to talk to people about it. And even if it didn't go anywhere, would I feel like a failure from it? Or would I go, oh, well, that's interesting. I, either way, I'm happy I learned that uh, and I can move on to the next thing, right? Is it an interesting enough idea for you that you would have actually done the research anyway for yourself, you know? Um, but if you failed, on getting a, a, a sort of validation for pursuing it, would it still bother you that much to, to want to actually experiment with it? And then the third thing of, um, you know, ranking your ideas and thinking about the questions of uh, how you might rank your, your ideas if this is worthwhile pursuing is a very important one. And that's why we started with the skill sets inventory first is are you equipped, right? Am I equipped with the skills, the talents, maybe the network and the resources or the experience to make this idea a reality. And I don't mean business skills, because that's something you will have to learn. But just in the performance of solving this problem, do I already have existing skill sets, existing knowledge, existing a know-how to make it worthwhile for people to hire me for this? Could I do this tomorrow? Or is it something that I kind of have dabbled in and interested in, but it's really I'm not ready for. And that can actually truly help you decide and discern 
what ideas are meant to be pursued today and what are not right for today. You know, I always use the line of the right for right now idea because you can't wait for until the most biggest idea hits your head, the most profitable idea and the most, you know, skilled, equipped idea that you have. Sometimes you have to start with what you know and you're going to be a lot faster in creating that business and getting those customers in and having a profitable idea by making sure that the idea actually utilizes skills that you have. Right. And hence why the skills inventory of knowing yourself and knowing what you're capable of doing is so important in this validation stage of knowing what business idea to start with. And when you answer those questions of validation, you can see the ratings like out of five, right? Which one has the highest rating? You will then start to focus your time and effort more on expanding that idea and making that idea uh, you know, beta testing it or working with a customer on it because that gives you a bit of direction of why you're choosing it. And knowing why you're choosing it and being confident that the choice you're making has been discerned and thought about and research will make you move faster on it because there's a real reason of why you have to start that versus just a hazy reason uh, of, of just pursuing something for the sake of it. Okay, we need the inner motivation uh, a lot more in the beginning uh, of starting a business. So start implementing your top ideas, but in such a way that you're making progress with them, right? Is, is ideas are in a way insignificant and unimportant unless you actually move with it and, and progress and see things that happen from execution. So the doingness, you know, the act of doing is actually where the answers are. The ideas are not where the answers are. You know, the overthinking about those ideas are not the answers. They're, you can do even without a website by uh, that is uh, the right thing for you. Okay. I think I just got a little glitch on my live stream that maybe told me that I was on pause. Uh, so I want to re reiterate what I said, just in case that you missed it, uh, because I feel like it had to restart this live stream. So I'm not sure if you heard what I said. So I'm going to go back into the last thing I talked about, uh, which was the, 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 um, systematic approach of ranking your business ideas. So, Ooh, technology is not working for me today, but hopefully you caught majority of what I said, uh, but I wanted to sort of rehash what I said so that if you missed it, um, you, I didn't sort of go offline because I think something happened there. Uh, so the last part of validation of idea is ranking, right? Ranking the short list of ideas that actually uh, is going to be conducive to your talents and your skills in order to give you the confidence to pursue that idea. Okay. So the first way to rank is one of five, right? Rank whatever way that you see is worthwhile for you. Look at the idea and go, is this idea exciting for me to work on, right? Is it something I'm curious about, interested enough in, it lights a fire in my belly to work on it, okay? Second ranking is, is pursuing this idea likely to benefit me, even if I fail? So will I learn something from it? Does it matter, even if it wasn't a thing I would pursue, but I'm still interested enough to actually learn more about it, right? So that would be uh, the second way of ranking it. The third way of ranking it is, are you equipped with the skill sets and talents, maybe network or resources to make this idea come into reality? Could you do the job if someone hired you to solve that problem tomorrow, you could actually do it without having to relearn things. Okay. That's going to make the idea, um, a, a, a lot more, uh, feasible for you to start. Carolyn, thanks for letting me know you're actually listening to me now. Uh, I know it doesn't want you to know how to rank your ideas. That's why you have to attend the webinar. Uh, but we're going to talk more about this, but hopefully you caught that last part of me talking about that again. Um, uh, rate that right. One to five, ask those questions for all those ideas, right? Again, is the idea exciting, exciting for me to work on? Is this idea worthwhile pursuing, even if it reaches a wall and I'm not going to pursue it? If it failed, uh, would I still benefit from the learning? Am I curious enough about it to continue? And then lastly, the most important question, are you equipped right now with the skill sets and talents and know-how to actually do this job tomorrow if you need to? Okay. And that last question is a very big discerning factor. It's a big deciding factor for you to choose between the ideas because I get so many people uh, that basically will say, oh my God, I've got 10 great ideas. But when they actually ask that question of like, do I have the skills though to do this idea? Or did I just think it's a good idea? You know, that can absolutely help in that last question. And that's why we started with the skills inventory uh, question first to start. Uh, Carolyn, you said sticky notes exercise is, an, is helpful <coughs> because you can shift them around if you're indecisive. So true. 
And you can sort of start to be like, okay, the yellow sticky notes are a maybe, and the pink sticky notes are sort of like really, really important and really doable for me, you know? And you start to categorize them. I love sticky notes. They're very movable. You're so right. Uh, and so doing that brain dump first of your skills, then going into like what interest things that I have about what I'm passionate about, and start moving things around and seeing what goes together, seeing the themes that go together, and then coming up with a short list of ideas that come up from the research of yourself and starting from there and then doing the ranking and the rating, you know, and in order to verify which is the one I want to back the horse of, you know, and then you're able to do things like the, the beta testing and the testing it out of your services in within that idea in order to, um, uh, get that validation before spending money on your website, spending money on whatever you think you need to do for business. Okay. So I hope that was helpful in, in, in thinking a little bit about what's important to focus on versus Wasting time researching and wasting time uh, just seeing what everybody else is doing and getting back to a centered place of understanding what you are capable of doing and what skill sets you already possess, which is going to be much easier to build a business around rather than trying to conform to a, 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 a good idea that's meant for somebody else. Okay, so if this topic interests you and you are in the midst of validating your ideas or coming up with a business idea or or discerning ideas. Um, I would love for you to join me in, in an in-depth training I'll be running for free next week, uh, which is understanding what business you should start. So the link is not sure up top or below this video uh, where you can sign up for free. And it's basically uh, called the what business should I start webinar. Uh, and, and what I'm going to teach you to do is to learn how to repurpose your experience, uh, your knowledge and your skills into a meaningful uh, business direction how to identify strengths that you might not be aware of that's outside of your resume that can actually be utilized for a business idea. Uh, and I'm also going to share with you the one thing that you need to identify uh, or discover to identify a business idea that actually pays you. Not every idea is always profitable. So I'm going to share what that one thing is. So come on the webinar to learn that. Uh, I'm also going to talk about how you can validate your ideas before you quit your job, how to validate it simply and lean, leanly, is that a word? Leanerly? <laughs> Uh, before you put all your, you know, effort and time and money into it, uh, doing it as a side hustle and doing it as an experiment before you quit. Uh, and I'm also going to share uh, different ways that actually real people, past clients of mine, past people I've ever interviewed, um, and examples of all these corporate escapees that have built a profitable business using their existing skills to help prompt some inspiration. Uh, and then we're going to end that webinar with a live Q&A session where you get to ask me uh, your burning questions about your business idea, uh, your particular situation, uh, and then I can give you a lot of me time, right, in that in that conversation. So uh, if you're interested in that, that's happening uh, next week. Let me check the date so I have that right. Uh, that's August 15th at 8 p.m. Eastern time, which is 5 p.m. Pacific time. Um, if the time zone doesn't work for you, don't worry. If you sign up, you'll get a replay, and you can actually submit your questions. We'll have an email out before the webinar where you can uh, email me, actually, with your questions. So even if you're not live on the call, uh, or on the webinar, I'm going to make sure to answer that question for you at the Q&A session, okay? But if you can attend live, you can be a quick hot seat, you can be a case study uh, where we help you actually with your personal uh, business idea and make sure you're moving forward with it. Uh, there's going to be so much cool things uh, we're going to talk about at the webinar, which uh, takes a lot more time. So that's why I wanted to give you a brief outline today and then have you attend the webinar for a more in-depth training. Uh, so Carolyn says, highly recommended for everyone to dip their toes in. You'll get a lot of info in the webinar. It's true. Carolyn, you've attended many webinars, and now you're in a program with me. Uh, there's, uh, you know, when we incubate together and when we can actually focus on one problem at a time and really have a full discussion as a group, it's so much more helpful uh, than trying to do it on your own. Uh, and, and, you know, what you know is what you know, and you don't know what you don't know. So this collective intelligence uh, we're going to have, and the webinar is going to be super cool, super useful uh, for helping you identify the right business idea for you. Okay. Thank you guys for joining me. Sorry for the tech issues today. Uh, hopefully you caught majority of what I have to say. Uh, and I'll be checking in on the chat box a little bit later if you have any questions. But I hope you do join me on the webinar. Uh, we'll, we'll be talking uh, more deeply into this and helping you uh, with a few exercises to define your idea and make sure you feel confident about pursuing it. And that's going to open up a whole new door for you of excitement and enthusiasm about having something to offer so that you can have something to focus on in, in, in the root of quitting your job. 
job. Okay. Thanks guys for joining me. Always love talking to you guys. And again, any topics that I can come up with for the live streams that I do every week, let me know what they are below and I'll make sure to include that uh, on next week's uh, live stream as well. Thanks guys for joining me. See you later and hopefully in the webinar. Bye.